verses 29 to the 42. Acts chapter 2, verses 29 to the 42. I'll read one verse and you will read next verse. We will alternate the reading together. And on the verse 42, we will read it together. If you did not bring your Bible inside your bulletin, you'll find a little sheet of paper that has the scripture lesson. And also, you could turn to our projection, uh, read it along with me. Here we go. If you're ready, let me know by saying amen. 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 Here we go. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried. And his tomb is here to this day. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. Until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Themselves the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Bow your head with me. Father God, as we come together this morning, uh, as we have your words open in front of us, come and speak to us and come and touch us and, and come and transform us this morning through your words this morning. Thank you for this morning. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. If you're glad to be here, give me a shout of amen. amen. If you're really glad to be here, give me a shout of hallelujah. hallelujah. And if you're truly glad to be here, give me a shout of praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, we are called to praise our God. Amen. That's why we're here this morning. We want to praise our God every day of our lives. You know, that's a privilege, being children of God. That there's someone up there whom we can call our Heavenly Father, and that we could worship Him, and we could praise Him, and that we could give our lives to Him. That what Howard shared this morning was a wonderful about how God works, that He is love. And that he cares about every one of our lives. And so I urge you, praise him every day. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, praise his name. Because he is faithful. He is wonderful. And that he is the giver of everything that we need in this life. His promise is very clear. He said, I will send my Holy Spirit on you. And that Holy Spirit came upon the church in Jerusalem. 
They waited. They fervently prayed in the upper room. 120 people gathered together. When they prayed and when they worshiped, when they fellowship, the Holy Spirit came upon that church and that group of people. And amazing thing was that the miracles began to happen. Amazing thing, unbelievable thing began to happen in that church. Let me urge you, seek the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life because your life will be forever changed. You know, we struggle in this life because, you know, we have, we have doubts about this life. You know, we have problems in this life because we are not being filled with the Holy Spirit. Experience how your life will be different once you got filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what happened to the people in the first church. And this is Peter. Peter who denied Jesus three times. He denied him three times. And he went back to the fishing when, when he died. And you know he had many doubts. But yet when the Holy Spirit came upon the church, he stood proudly with the 11 other disciples and he proclaimed the message of God to the people. You know, do you feel weak? Do you feel insufficient? Do you feel if you do, then be asked for the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Because once the Holy Spirit comes upon you, it's power. Do not miss. The power of God will come upon you and it will make you bold and be able to share the gospel everywhere, no matter where you go. Amazing thing is that once he preached this message, what happened? It says 3,000 people were added to that church on that day. Remember, there were only 120 people in the upper room, but yet when the message was preached, 3,000 people heard, and then they became, became followers of Jesus Christ. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. Because God promised to the people that you will receive it. You just wait and it will come upon you. And it did. And as this church in the, in, in the, in, in, in the book of Acts, the very first church, let's look at this church and what's happening. As the message is preached, and we want to learn from this church, of the first church in Jerusalem, and we want to become a great church. You know, God has blessed this church with a great building, great people, all his children coming together. But our goal is not to be satisfied with where we are and with the people that we have, but we need to strive for better for tomorrow. For that our lives will be better, our families will be better, and that our church will be better. We got to continue every day as we live our lives. We got to make our family a greater family. We got to make our lives better, greater life. And we got to make this church a great church. Great church that will make difference in this world. You know, God brought us here together. For us to be the salt and the light in this world. Not to be just satisfied with what we are doing and what, what, where we are. But rise above where we are. And, and always striving to be better church. And better people. Because God expects better things from our lives. He expects every one of us to be better. Greater. Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, He expects us to be better. And so let's look at this church. This first church in Jerusalem. What made this church great is this. As we hear from the, uh, the Peter's message, what happened was that the truth was spoken in this church. The truth was spoken in this church. The very first church. Look at verse 30, everybody. Verse 30. Show us the verse 30. Let's read it together. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him an oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. 
It's talking about the line of Jesus Christ. It's talking about the prophecy that's been long ago, that, that has been promised, that through the line of David, through the line of Abraham, will come a Messiah, Messiah who will rescue people, Messiah who will come and, 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 and heal and, and to save people. And the message is clear that, that one of his descendants, the Jesus Christ, is coming and that he is the Lord, he is the Messiah, that he is the King, and that he is coming into this world. You know, key thing about church is about Jesus Christ. That he is our Lord, he is our, he is our Savior, he is our Rock, he is our Messiah. That as people of God talks about, their conversation should be about Jesus Christ. That he came into this world to give us new life, to save us, and to rescue us from our sins. That church, the center of message, should be about Jesus Christ. That people, when believers gather together, when they talk about, they engage in conversation, they should be talking about who Jesus Christ is. Our life our center is, should be about Jesus Christ. Not about anything else. Yes, we talk about other things, but yet the center of our conversations and our message should be about Jesus Christ, how He loves us and then how He saved us by willing to go on the cross and dying on the cross for you and I. That He loves us. You know, as unfortunately, it's getting tougher and tougher to talk about Jesus Christ in this world. You know, schools, you cannot, you know, there's no really freedom of religion in the school. You cannot talk about God. You cannot talk about your faith. There are many restrictions as to what you can do in this, inside the school. Even on a TV, on a, on, a, on a dramas and the movies, it's not easy. To, you know, they, they really, you know, in the name of getting along with other people and the name of being politically correct, you know, we're not, we're told not to talk about our faith. You know, even in military right now, the chaplains are telling us that you cannot end the prayer as a chaplain. You cannot pray the prayer in the name of Jesus. Our society is getting tougher and tougher. We're told to get along. Don't be so dogmatic about your faith. You know, don't just believe in you. You cannot say, they, you know, people will say, you cannot say only Jesus will save you. There's a Buddha, there's a Mohammed, and there's a, and all other gods out there. And how can you say that you only through faith in Jesus Christ? And so we're told not to talk about our religion or our faith. The thing is, for every believer, every church in this world, Christ should be the center of the, their message. Brothers and sisters, the issue of the homosexuality right now, we're, here's the thing, my brothers and sisters. Even when, when last time President Obama was in, in his inauguration, there was a pastor who was supposed to give benediction, but yet because that pastor was against homosexualism, he was not being able to do that. They invited another pastor who agreed on the issue of the homosexuality, and, 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 and then that pastor was able to do the benediction. Here's what I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters. We need to hate the sin, but we need to love the sinners, okay? Because every one of us, we are all sinners. Whether you're straight or you're homosexual, we are all sinners before God, and we are to love one another, but yet we are to hate the sin. If someone who is with a homosexual orientation comes into this church, we need to welcome them in the name of Jesus. But yet, we need to talk about what the wrong with the sin is. 
whether you're homosexual, whether you're a liar, murderer, killer, or stealer, or adulterer, they're all sinners before God. The issue is what's right and what's wrong before God. We, may, we, we must be very clear. The world, the society may tell us different things, but yet we live by the word of God. This is the center. This is the main message. This is the foundation as how we need to live our lives. We must not let the society or the world dictate us as how we need to live. We need to let the word of God dictate us. Let the word of God be the foundation. We are all sinners, my brothers and sisters. And that's why we need the word of God. And this word needs to be preached every Sunday. This world you know, needs to be, the world needs to be preached upon every one of us. The, how do we make a, our church a better church and a greater church? Christ is the center of the message. Christ is the foundation of this church. That's how we're going to do this church. That's how we're going to move on being the salt and light in this world. Christ is the center. Second thing about this church, what happened, where, how this church became great is that, look at verse 37 and 30, 38. Verse 37 and verse 38. 37 and 38. Verse 37, 38. Okay, let's read this together. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You know, what happens in a church is that when the truth is spoken, that, that people begin to realize about their sins in their life, and they begin to repent. As I said, we are all sinners before God. And every day, we are faced with the temptations. Every day, we are faced with the sins. Sometimes we win, sometimes we fall. But yet, every time we fall, we need to repent of our sins. You know, church is made up of all sinners. Okay? No one here is a perfect, no one here is without a sin. That we're made up of a sinners in here. In a church, basically, is a hospital for the for the sinners, isn't it? I, I mean, you know, you could say, "Oh, I've been good. I've been really good." But yet, every one of us in here, we're sick. And some of you, you don't want to hear that. But yet, fact of matter is that every one of us, we're sinners. I mean, your pastor looks great and this clothes and everything else, but yet there are things that I struggle with. There, there are sins that I face with every day, and, and sometimes I win, sometimes I fail, but yet, you know, the key is that knowing that God loves us, knowing that He is my God, knowing that He cares about my life, and that all I have to do is just come back to Him. That's it. Just come back to my God and say, God, I'm sorry. God, I made a mistake. You know, that's the amazing thing about our God. That He, is a, he gives us second chances, third chances, fourth chances, time and time again. He just wants us to come back. I know what you've done. I know where you are. Just come back to me, my son. Come back to me, my daughter. That's our God. You know, He allows U-turns in our lives. If we've been going the wrong way, all we have to do is just turn around and just come back to God. Repentance. Repenting of our sins. This is what church is all about. Imperfect people coming into this place, people who are infected with the sin, coming into his house and asking God for his forgiveness. I pray every day you come into this place that you will just bow your head and just ask for the forgiveness. 
Because all of us need forgiveness. All of us do. And so, to make a great church, church should be a place all sinners coming together and repenting of their sins and asking God for His forgiveness. Third thing about this church, what happened was that truth was spoken and the uh, people repented and, and, and they were baptized and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened was that the church became united as one. Look at verse 42. Verse 42, everybody. Verse 42. Let's read this together. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Once the truth was spoken, once the people repented of their sin, what happened to the church was that they began to come together on one faith in Jesus Christ. All God's people coming together and living life together. You know, I think we got a great thing going on in this church. As you look around, we are made up all people. All God's children coming together. You know, this is, what some, this is something that I'm really proud of our church. That all of us, Asians, whites, blacks, all coming together and calling themselves each other brothers and sisters and they're worshiping together, living life together, having fellowship together. This is a greatness of our church. This is what, what when we get to heaven, this is what heaven's going to look like. All his children having faith in Jesus Christ and living lives together. Now that's why in, in each of us in here, as we come together, as you face other people in your lives, that's why you need to talk to them about the faith in Jesus Christ. So that all his children will be saved. Not just certain kind of people, not just certain kind of uh, group of people, certain ethnic people, but all God's children coming together, living life together. And the verse is very clear in verse 42. They say, they devoted themselves to apostle teaching, to fellowship, breaking of bread, and to prayer. When people of God gather together, and live life together, there's a power in it. There's a power in the worship. There's a power in the fellowship. There's a power in the prayer when all His children come together. That's why we need to spend more time together and, 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 and learning and, and, and fellowshipping with one another. That's why I want to urge you and encourage you. Come and join, join us on Wednesday nights for the Wednesday night worship service. And that's why I want to urge, encourage you after this worship service at 11 o'clock. There are four different Bible studies going on. Come and participate. The doing church is about doing it together. People united together. Becoming one people. One body in Jesus Christ. It's so important as we pray for the mission trip. We're sending people out to the mission field. But for the rest of us, wherever we are, to pray for God's power be upon the mission field and on the mission team. Even though you're not some, many of you, you're not going, but yet you are part of the mission team. And you're part of this church and, and that we got to work together and pray together and make this happen and, and let this mission trip be the great, one of the greatest mission trips ever. we got to work together, my brothers and sisters. we got kindness and action ministry that's going on with the pantry ministry, with the drink ministry, and then also helping hands ministry. There are parts that you can play that, that it's not about for certain people to work. It's all of us working together. All of us trying to make this church to be a better church. I ask you to join me. Join me on Wednesday nights. Join me on, on the Bible studies. Join me with the kindness and action. And let's make this church a better church. Let's make this church a greater church. I ask you to join me.
I ask you to join me. Let's make this church a better church. Turn to the person next to you and say, let's make this church a better church. Amen? Amen. Let's make this church a greater church so that people can see out in the world what we are doing, so that people can see how we are loving as Christ loves us and being the salt and the light in this world. And I want to encourage you. We are about family worship. This church is about fathers, mothers, and the children, and the grandparents coming together, worshiping together. Family that prays together stays together. Family that worships together stays together. I want to urge you, if you're here by yourself, ask your parents. Ask your children to come together and worship our Almighty God. So let's make this church a better church. Standing firm on the foundation of the Jesus Christ. Standing firm on the word of, word of Jesus Christ. And that repentance happens. And that people are united as a one. Let's make this our goal. Let's make this our desire to make this church a better church. Bow your head with me. As your head's bowed, I want you to just pray right now. Tell God that Christ be your foundation. That Christ is your foundation. And that you will repent of your sins. And ask God to help us become one great family. One great people. That will continue to worship. I ask you to commit to this church. With your time, with your efforts, with your money, with your, all that you have, that you become part of this great family. And that together we'll do amazing things together. And making this place to be a better place. Just spend a few minutes right now. Would you do that right now? Ask God to give you fullness of the Holy Spirit right now so that you'll be strong and ready to commit to this church and make this church a better place and be the salt and the light in this world Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us this morning and for challenging us to make this place a better place and to make this church to be a better church and a greater church. So God, as we come together, united us as a one. United us in, the, in Jesus Christ. That all his children becoming one and to go and share the good news in this world. To go and save the lost in this world. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for speaking to us. We thank you for the, your challenge. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Would you all stand and stand for the closing song. Who rises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. The strength who rises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope. A strong deliverer, you are, you are the everlasting.
everlasting God. The everlasting God. You do not think you won't grow weary, oh Lord. You are defender of the wind. And you comfort those in need. And you lift us up on wings like eagles. Still the rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Still the rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord God. You reign forever. Our home, our strong deliverer. You are, you are the everlasting God. The everlasting God. person next to you let's give this blessing to each other the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now grant many hands possible this signifies we're one body one church one congregation we're going to head out into the world together and victorious together receive this prayer father God we thank you for challenging us to make this place a better place, to make this church a better church and a greater church. So God, help us that we will work together 
that we will be united in, in Jesus Christ and that will be the salt and the light in this world. Thank you, God. May the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, everlasting love of our God, and the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you as you are headed out into the world. May God bless every one of you. Amen. You are